Hey folks, Gwei. I mentioned earlier that I was uh, at a Remembrance Day ceremony just recently and that I was feeling real judgy about people who were in the park and not going to the Remembrance Day ceremony. They were off jogging, they were off doing their thing, they were enjoying their day with their loved ones or with their dog. They were enjoying a beautiful day out in the Halifax sun in this wonderful place called Point Pleasant Park. Yeah, I was feeling real judgy. I was feeling real judgy, feeling uh, really, really sad, feeling kind of angry, feeling like everybody needs to be at a Remembrance Day ceremony. Everybody should be at a Remembrance Day ceremony. This is the only thing you need to do on this day. Once you get this done, you can go and do whatever you like, but this comes first. You know, when you feel these things, when we have these reactions, when we have these responses, they can be a real genuine blessing. When we feel bad about ourselves, when we feel bad about something we've done, when we, when we have a strong emotional reaction or response to a particular stimuli, we can gain so much out of it if we're willing to really take a look at it, if we're willing to really explore it and ask ourselves what's going on and ask ourselves what's happening. If we're really willing to dig down deep, we can gain all kinds of knowledge about ourselves and about the circumstances and about the situation and we can use that knowledge for our benefit. We can use that knowledge if, again, if we're strong enough, if we're bold enough, we can use that knowledge as a catalyst for our growth. And as Christians, that's what we're supposed to be doing all the time. We are always supposed to be growing closer to Christ. And I don't just mean closer to Christ like we're supposed to know Christ more. I mean we are supposed to grow into the shoes of Jesus Christ more and more and more every single day. That's our job. Right? We are supposed to become more like him all the time. And, and, and while we can do that by reading the Bible and by going to church, those things are also there to help us deal with these other, with these other issues, with these other realizations, with these other reactions and responses, with these other powerful emotions. Because if I feel something really, really strong, and I think that there might be something in there for me to explore, for me to learn from, then I take that and I go to the book and I say, okay, what does it say? What does it say about this particular thing? What is God, where does God call me when I'm feeling this particular way? Where does Jesus call me when I'm feeling this particular way? How am I supposed to be in these particular circumstances? So these, these moments where we're feeling judgy, where we're feeling rage, where we're feeling anger, where we're feeling envy, where we're feeling malice, they can help us by becoming a catalyst for us for change. Now, I know out there, there's a lot of people really, really, really afraid of what is being taught to kids in school, especially about, you know, here in Canada, for example, the residential schools or our, our history of slavery. Right? We don't, well, let's not get into that. We don't want to talk about those things because we don't want our kids to feel bad. We don't want our white kids to feel bad about what their ancestors may have done. Nobody should feel bad. Nobody should be ashamed. Nobody should be told that they are inherently evil or that they are a part, that, that, they're, that, they're, that their origins, that their ancestors were a part of, of an inherently evil, racist, vile system. We don't want kids, we don't want kids to, to feel that way. But the truth is, if our kids feel something because of what they learn in history, it's an opportunity for them to grow. It's an opportunity for us to interact with our kids, to help them grow, to go in the directions that they, you know, mom, dad, slavery was really horrible. And it was people that looked just like me that did it. Oh my gosh, were we involved in the slave trade? You know, I don't know if my family was involved in the slave trade. Uh, it's possible. I lived in a, I, I, my, my family, 
lived in a shipbuilding community. It's entirely possible we built ships for that cause. I, don't, I really, I don't know. But what we've done, what our, what our family may have done, what our community may have done, what our ancestors may have done, we must make sure that, that we go in a different direction, that we don't make the same mistake, that we don't do the same things. But if our kids, if our kids find them in a place where they're feeling bad about what their ancestors are, have done, where they're feeling bad about what their great-great-grandparents have done, if we're in a place where we're feeling bad because our children are coming to us telling us about what they're learning in school and we're feeling something about what they're learning in school, don't lament, rejoice. This is your opportunity. This is our opportunity to learn. It's our opportunity to dig down. It's our opportunity to explore. One of the greatest things I've done in the last two years was dig into the history of my grandfather's regiment during the Second World War. It has told me so much about them and it has made me feel things for them and for myself. Because it wasn't always terribly heroic. Sometimes it was incredibly funny. Sometimes it was torturously vile. But it's there. It needs to be looked at. Because if we're willing to look at it, it also means we're willing to grow. Last thing I'm going to say on this, my English teacher, grade 7 and 8, always said, the worst day of your life is the day you've stopped learning. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray, I pray that if my English teacher's words are true, that the worst day of your life is the day you stop learning, then I, then I pray that you never cease to explore these marvelous gifts, these catalysts that come into our lives when we feel something, when we react in a particular way, when we respond in a particular way. I pray you will always have the courage to dig down into them and to grow from them. Amen. Demultus.